This is a ramping up your English book review. When I was learning early intermediate Spanish, I found that children's books were a great tool for becoming more proficient. Now, if you're an adult, don't be embarrassed to take advantage of this great resource. You'll learn more about the instructional theme, and the plentiful illustrations will give you great context to better understand what you're reading. And one such book is Trains, written and illustrated by Gail Gibbons. There are many books entitled Trains, but the one by Gail Gibbons features all the basics of trains. Her illustrations are works of art, and the text is easy to follow. Gail Gibbons has written many books that help children learn. Let your inner child play with this one, and you'll take another step toward English proficiency without even knowing it. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is Episode 1, Segment 2. If you missed our first segment, you can find it at letscreate.org. When improving second language skills, it's helpful to have a theme that provides a context for the English you'll hear and learn during your journey to English proficiency. We're still at the beginning of our thematic unit, Trains and Railroads. While it's normal to be eager to study the structure and expand your vocabulary, it pays to become firmly rooted in the theme first. We'll roll out lots of lessons and guide you through the language structures of English. However, today we're taking the time to solidly establish our theme. To those ends, we're going to watch another introductory video clip about trains and railroads. Your assignment this time is to see how many English words you recognize in the clip's narration. You can do that formally by keeping a tally or just note about what percent of the narration you understand. Feel free to use the visual clues. That's why they're there. You have probably heard trains, even seen them. Trains were a revolution in transportation, the cutting edge of technology in their time. A train's whistle or the clickety-clack of the wheels on the rails can take us back in time. But trains continue to be an important part of our lives today, and they're a source of fascination and even obsession to some. Trains can also take us to places of unimaginable beauty. Freight trains move things, or cargo, across the country using way less energy per pound than trucks. This freight train is headed east along the Columbia River. In the past, there were hundreds of railroad companies in the United States. Now there are only a few. Even the giant Southern Pacific has merged with Union Pacific. Passenger rail service switched from hundreds of private companies to Amtrak, now the only provider of passenger rail service to most parts of the United States. After more than 40 years of service, Amtrak continues to provide memorable service to rail passengers, quite an accomplishment since its inception in 1972. Major cities and small towns depend on Amtrak for the freedom to travel. Tourist trains allow people to experience rail travel as it was in the past, also called excursion trains. These railroads travel on old railroad lines that are no longer part of the main rail network. Many of them use historic steam engines. And what the, what's the name of this train? The Skunk Train, because it's stinky. 
Some will take you to wild places like Alaska. Some passenger trains combine the excursion experience with regular scheduled transportation between one place and another. Amtrak times its routes so that passengers get to see the most beautiful scenery during the daylight hours. This train is called the California Zephyr, traveling along the Colorado River in the Rocky Mountains. Some railroads tried very hard to keep passenger rail service when airplanes and interstate highways cut into their passenger base. The Rio Grande Railroad tried to operate this section of the California Zephyr route even after Amtrak was born, but they had to give it up due to the expense. Now the number of people riding the California Zephyr, now operated by Amtrak, is increasing every year. Each passenger train is under the responsibility of a conductor seen here helping children detrain at the station. A car where passengers are not welcome is the baggage car. This is where checked baggage is carried. On passenger trains, sleeping cars have bedrooms that leave only a tiny hall for people to pass. Some trains pull special cars and have special events, like wine tasting on the Coast Starlight. The dining car is a tasty luxury and can seem like a necessity on long distance trains. The food here is very tasty. The observation car offers wraparound windows for enjoying mountainous scenery. Speaking of mountainous scenery, you get to see tunnels and snow sheds on some trains. There are softer, gentler views as well. California artichokes. Fry them up. Some trains go right along the ocean, like the Coast Starlight in California. There are platforms where passengers go from long distance trains to local and regional transportation. Major cities have union stations, built many years ago by competing railroads. In smaller towns, there are stations just for Amtrak. Passengers get the comfort of waiting inside and get services like being able to buy tickets. Getting on a train is called boarding. Getting off is called deboarding or detraining. When a train leaves the station, that's called pulling out. Coming into a station is called pulling in. There's a lot to learn about trains, but it's fun to learn. Welcome aboard. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. So how did you do? How much of the narration did you understand? Whatever amount, you've taken the first steps in assessing your own proficiency. Your only assignment now is to write down something to represent how much of the clip you understood. Also put the date. We'll compare that with a similar clip later in the unit. This completes segment two of episode one of Ramping Up Your English, an educational support program for intermediate English language learners who want to improve their language proficiency. If that's you, you're in the right place. I'll return right after this.